ladies and gentlemen, Kingwin Pro League 2015. Uh, this is week seven, first day. We are going to go to the second match of the day with Strive Crow versus Zixo. Uh, so Strive Crow versus Zixo, we said, you know, Strive Crow is the currently top player of the entire event with a flawless score so far. Uh, Life Coach was really close behind up until recently where he got his first loss. But Zixo is currently 2-3. to three. He was 2-4 before his loss against Masson got taken out as a result of Masson dropping out of the league. So he's got to feel like he's still got a chance in this league if he goes uh, for almost a flawless record from now on. Yeah, that's, that, that's very true. And Zixo has to feel confident now because, you know, you just got awarded a win basically. Yeah, well, yeah. You, well, you, maybe not the got, same, but you know, you get a second chance. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to get a loss on your record. So if Strive Crow happens to lose multiple times in a row and Zixo just wins, if he beats Strive Crow and beats his next two matches as well, he might end up in the top three and move on to the playoffs. So it's going to be a rough, uh, rough yeah. path no matter what, but he's going to have to do his best. And if he beats Strive Crow today, there is definite hope of that. Yeah, but by the way, you teach me about Isera. So I will teach right. you about Xixo. It's Xixo, not Zixo. I call him Zixo because I don't know. It's it's cooler, and I can also always. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say I can resort <laughs> to the pun if you ever go Sixo against someone, but so Xixo. Yeah. Okay. Xixo. That doesn't sound very. I don't know, pronunciation friendly, but that's fine. I'll get used to it. So Xixo versus Strive Crow, <laughs> playing <laughs> Isira. Um. So what? <laughs> <laughs> no admins, it's not Sexu, okay? It's not Sexu. So Strife Crow versus Zixo. Xixo. So Strife Crow's playing Hunter, Mage, and Warlock yeah. versus Xixo's Mage Rogue Mage and, Shaman. and Shaman. Both okay. are playing Mage. Um, do you put Strife Crow on Freeze Mage or Mech Mage? Is my question. I would say Strife Crow will go with a Mech Mage. Still, it feels like he is most uh, fond of his Mech Mage, like an overall. He thinks it's uh, one of the best decks, so I would say he will pick the Mech Mage again. All right. Um, but this kind of allows Sixo to counter the, the the matchup if he would he would think about going after that deck. And let's analyze that if that's possible. He brought Mage, Rogue, and Shaman. So Rogue kind of okay, right, against the Mech Mage. If tech properly, it can get even better. But yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. We got um... the Mage, which is. Which might be the freeze mage. So if there's a freeze mage, good matchup that's a for good freeze matchup. mage. Yeah. yeah. And shaman, aggressive shaman of fall reverse. You basically wreck the mech mage. I would say. Yeah, it's kind of like when mech shaman came up. The initial version. I'm not even talking about the uh, the later fell reaver that just came up recently. Just the the much earlier Mech Shaman still had a pretty okay matchup against Mech Mage, albeit it was a little bit under 50%, but it was close enough, and I think the Fell Reaver tech really pushed it over the top. So if Strife Crow is in fact playing Mech Mage, Sixo could abuse that in a way. It's True. possible that he could abuse it. So True. we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, you're definitely right. There's a possibility that there was uh, some targeting there for from Sixo well, over Strife Crow. Maybe I'm just, you know shooting blanks here, but yeah. who knows? Yeah. Lothar are shooting blanks world. confirmed. <laughs> but I took off the blouse, so so people, the hoodie I mean, so people can say it's not pre-recorded anymore. Yeah, it's, it's not pre-recorded and I won't lick my elbow. I know somebody asked for truth, nor put shoe on head, because that wouldn't accomplish anything. But, you know, this is not a pre-recorded <laughs> event. Uh, and we did not pre-record these comments in foresight of you asking us to take off the hoodie and the shoe on the head. Just want to make sure we're not metagaming the uh, pre-recordation. So, that being said, the first match will be Warlock versus Mage. If Strife Crow is playing mid-range Warlock, which is very much likely, That's I'd say, true. unless he wants to bring uh, some kind of funky zoo deck, Mage has a pretty tough matchup, depending on whether or not it's Freeze or Mech. Well, I would say Freeze Mage has a really good match against uh, yeah. Warlocks. Unless yep. it's, it's like Void Walkers into Malganis after Doomsayer. Yeah, but that's very unlikely. I mean, Void Caller summoning Malganis is a one in the lifetime thing. Like, not one in the lifetime, but it's you can't really assume that's going to be the regular outcome of your match. Void Caller, Void Caller into Malganis is a one in the lifetime thing. Why are you well, saying it about Freeze Bane Mage. of Doom? Right, I forgot about Bane of Doom bringing out Malganis. Yeah, that happens every time. Yeah, like I guess how many times? What are the odds of the Bane of Doom summoning Malganis? One in how many demons? Eighteen? I forget the exact number. I'm but not it's sure. somewhere in that range, if not even less. Demons, um, Hearts, and Google. 
Yeah, it'll give you worthless imps. You can't trust it. Hearthstone oh, PD will right. lie to you. Um, but yeah, definitely, I, I think Warlock, mid-range Warlock has a slight uh, advantage over Mech Mage, but if it's Freeze Mage, that's a completely different story. So we'll be going into the game right now, see exactly what players will be bringing to the tournament. I'm really eager to see what they decided to bring. I put 6-0 on decks that are... Oh, wow, he's playing Freeze Mage. Okay. Well, that's a well, pretty good as predicted. Here, as predicted. If he did target the Mech Mage from Strife Crow, this is definitely a good call. By the way, we have 12 demons from the classic pack. Mm hmm. We have so... Void Caller as an addition. We've gotten the uh, Imp Gang boss, Malgan. No, 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 wait, wait. Pack. This is with Void Caller. Okay. So that's from Nax as well. Yeah, then. so that's from Nax as well. So this is 12 with Nax, and in GVG we got. What? We got the Imp. Imp Imp gang boss right now, so that's 13. Yeah. And, and Malganis. GBG... No, that's with Mal. No, this is, there's no Malganis here. Okay, so 14. That's it? Just 14 demons? Alright, well, I that's pretty so. good. But... Yeah, that's oh, pretty the good. The odds are even better then. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. Actually, it is. I think this is, this is a really great card because the only bad outcomes are Blood Imp, Voidwalker, and Flame. Well, Baladum is off awful, but Flamant and Voidwalker are kind of decent, and the other drops are really okay. Well, Void yeah, Terror. Yeah, definitely. Free, free Void Color is not a, Void Terror is not, not really that great, but most of the time it's a really good drop. Anyway. Yeah. All right, so back to the game. So we have uh, Handlock, probably some kind of demon Handlock. So a deck that Strive Crow, you know, he just plays it all the time. It's a deck that he f seems to be feeling very comfortable with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How does it fare? Does it fare better than usual handlocks against against Freeze Mage? It depends if if he runs Mistress of Pain with Demon Heart, an example. All right, that would be really crucial at some point of the game. But I don't think if he's running Twilight Drakes, why well, why would he run Mistress of Pain? Right. When you speak of Mistress of Pain, you know what? That's another demon on the list that we didn't take into consideration. Oh yeah, right. Okay, now so we're looking at fifteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we we must be missing one somewhere somehow, but. Um. All right. So, this hmm. doomsayer here just preemptively forces Strivecore in a position, like a really awkward position. So he would have oh, to wow. use the dark okay. bomb. <laughs> I, I think you have to, right? There's really yeah. no reason not to. When else do you use it against Mage? Perhaps well, on Acolyte of Pain if it comes out, but losing a Drake for that doesn't seem worth it. Oh. Archmage being drawn so fast, it's really important because now you can, you know, this is a thing that maybe not everyone is thinking about, but when you have a card in at the start of the game, so impactful, like an Antonide as an example, you can adjust the whole game to around, that, it. around it. Like most of the time you would maybe save another card to, you know, you wouldn't save the, uh, another card to play it with Antonidas because you didn't have him. And now that you have him, you can make a different strategy and save an example a like Icelands for turn eight, right? Yeah. So my question is, how much do you like playing Void Caller on a board like this just to get a six six out? Is that not a play you ever make? That's not bad. Yeah, he didn't do it, but I was curious to know, like, is that a play that a line of play that many people take in certain Well, he knows like that's these, less or... less Doomsayer, right? Yeah, so that is the no second more, and no last. No more Doomsayers. Sixo's got to find card draw in order to fuel himself from now on. And Doomsayers are so valuable against Handlock. He threw them away really fast, I find, but... Sixo was really liberal with his Doomsayers here, actually. One of the... this is one of the most liberal ways to play them. I'm honestly very surprised. Hmm. I'm, I'm kinda thinking about it too. It doesn't feel right to just throw them away so so quickly and with unsecure, unsecured um, result from them, you know? Well, oh wow, he finds the perfect follow-up. Acolyte of Pain Ping, he's got the Alex Straws already and the Archmage plus Frostbolt oh. Ice Lance. This is crazy good for Xixo. Notice the effort on Xixo. Oh my god. Well, that's a bit, that's a bit tough here for Strive Crow. Hmm. 
you know the <laughs> you know the zombie chairs are basically dead i mean dead cards yeah if you play you don't want to you almost don't want to uh, use them in effect you know there was no mirror entity that mage i thought it'd be so funny if so if someone runs a single mirror entity in a freeze mage and caught I someone off guard with that I think Sixa was running a freeze mage with one mirror entity and a um, and powder shredders. I remember, I think a variant on it from Sixa himself. Really? So that would be pretty funny, but he might have just you know not gone back to it, or that might have been another player. But I remember he was at least running powder shredders. Well, I don't think he popped that void caller just yet. Oh, wow, the amount of burn Sixo's got in his hand is That's unreal. Insane. I don't even know what to say. Wow. But now he might mill himself if he doesn't drop at least one of those cards. He's got to freeze something. Wait, he's still going to be milled. He didn't think that through. Good yeah, thing he doesn't have anything true. he needs in that deck. Because he's got everything in hand, but... <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't need anything else, does he? Yeah, he's just, yeah he uh, <laughs> doesn't need anything else. That's basically... If, if you mill an Ice Barrier, you're, you're okay with that. Yeah. I guess you don't <laughs> want to lose the second Ice Lens, perhaps. That's like the worst at this point, and even then it's not too bad. Wait, double fireball into pyroblast. Oh my god, he lost a second ice lens. <laughs> this is like the only card he might have wanted to perhaps maybe think about keeping. I and now don't it's gone. think that's really a factor. Well, it kind of helps, but it's not going to be the most important thing. Sixo just has to get the fireballs with the pyro and he's going to be golden. But that was like the only possible card. And that he doesn't have been. the golden mage yet. Haha. Uh -huh. Yeah, he doesn't play enough mech. Hmm. So, what <laughs> what has to... What is the plan as Handlock? You have to deal with the Antoniders, because if, if you won't deal have, with him instantly, right now, you lose the whole game. Right? right. Yeah, you just throw away everything else. And to deal with him, you have to play both Hellfire and Defend of Argus. I, this is such an all-in play. I mean, this is the only way you kill the Archmage. The thing is, if you don't kill the Archmage... You lose. You lose. So you ultimately have to commit, despite the fact that it feels horrible. Unless you top like an Owl from the tap. No. But that's a very, very, very all-in play. I would say that he doesn't run a Siphon Soul because he runs Void Colors and the Infernal. And the Infernals, yes. Yeah. yeah. And you don't... Well, <laughs> you didn't even want to get a minion from that Void Caller now. After, because you, after after you sacrifice the Void Caller, you have to play the um, the Hellfire. The Hellfire, so you, yeah. yeah. So I think I have Sixo's line of play here. You... Oh, then again, if he double Fireballs and Jaraxxus is played, he's then one turn behind because their heal bot could then come out. So do you Alex first and see what, com what, what comes of it? Hmm. This might still be the best way to win because you've got a follow-up of 28 damage with 3 fireballs and pyro. I think that is still better than going all-out spells for the time being. I bring life and... <laughs> I've never known what she follows up with. <laughs> I, I don't know what Alex Straza brings. I know she brings life, but the rest... She brings life and lethal, probably. Um, How much that's about it. it um, that's... Six you used one, right? One frostbolt, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, there's been one frostbolt, one ice lance was milled. If he draws the second one, it's game instantly. Even if he doesn't, there's 26, 26 points no, of but there's, damage. There's a heal bot, right? So yeah, the heal so, bot is going to come down for sure. Yeah, so, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. Blood mage, fireball, fireball. That's 12 plus pyroblast, that's one of lethal. Does uh, Sixo has uh, Ice Barrier up? He's got an Ice Block up. No Ice Barrier though. But he's got okay, the Ice Block. So, for sure. mm, well, he had. 
Wait, 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 wait. He does have ice block. Yeah, he he's fine. He's gonna be way fine unless Strife yeah. top decks even more. Um... No, Xixo just plays safe. Yeah, I can't he blame him. Because if you go double fireball and your Axis comes out, then you hate yourself. And it might have come out, in fact. That's actually not a bad card for Strife Crow. I'd venture to say that's probably the best card for Strife Crow. I don't think so. But you will use it to heal two points of damage because that's what it will do. You will get Pyroblast right now. Well, it's that or you die right away. So I guess this is better than nothing. Heal bot might have been a bit better. Pyro blast. All right. So now the question is: Do you top deck the heal bot or do you not? Dun, 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 dun. Nope. Shut not up, here. Nope. So you have to use Jurax. That's so weak. Yeah, it's the only play you really have. But then, then, if there's a heal bot off the top, I think he would live because he's taking 14 from Blood Mage double fireball. But he's not dead yet. So he finds the heal bot, he's out of range of the second fireball, and Zixo, Xixo needs to top deck the second frostbolt. Oh man, could that really be true? Mm, uh, no. Could this be <laughs> happening? It's possible. If a heal bot is top deck for Strife Crow, this could be incredible. Or Major Domo Executive. <laughs> Strife Crow knows that there are two oh. fireballs. In yeah. Oh, 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 he died. Okay, no okay. he doesn't want to play well, around Okay, this. he didn't know there's two. He thought there's like, well, he knew about one. Maybe he didn't count yeah. on six or having two. Yeah, I, th I still think it's a really risky play, but Strife Crow's an amazing player, so he's playing to win, and he might have known that playing the Jaraxxus is not a play to win, since it relies on you getting the heal bot as a follow-up to, to survive it all. So is yeah. gonna be taking that one. That. Uh... Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward game here. Xixo finding everything he needed in the first part of his decks. No problem there. Double fireball to the face. That's a burnt gold-down. Well, off with you, Warla. Although he's gonna well, come back, right? Yeah, it will come back, but um, that's a that's a matchup that we could have see how it will go, right? Anticipate yeah. how it will go. It's it's not a big surprise most of the time. Uh, well, we mentioned Ow. it initially, right? If, if it was Freeze Mage, it had a really yeah. good matchup against Warlock, so that's kind of the expected outcome. I would say that Zoo has the best matchup against Freeze Mages. From all the Warlocks, all we the have, Warlocks, yeah. Yeah, I, I think Zoo still has the best matchup, which is kind of sad because you know Freeze Mages love to play around, uh, play against Zoo. Yeah, but sometimes you don't find what you need, and when you don't, you lose right away. Um, yeah. When you don't yeah. find that first AoE, it's the first AoE that's really a big deal against Zoo. Once you get the first one and you stem the bleeding, you can usually draw enough that you find the second one. But if you don't have the first, you're out of the game. So that's kind of the reason why Zoo has that edge, because they there's a few times it can slip around the top decks from the initial Freeze Mage's hand. But um, yeah, the longer I... the game goes on, Freeze Mage is more favored. And I think now with the Void Colors being omnipresent in Zeus, they have also additional um, right. ways of dealing with the mage because then you you gain a creature of charge basically. Free free yep. of charge too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> a free of charge charge minion. Damn right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Zoo did get a matchup that's even better now with the advent of uh, the Void Caller and the, you know, the fact that it, we saw, we see Malganus now even in Zoo. Um, I, I, not necessarily Zoo, but it's like mid-range Demon Lock with some a, a really heavy aggro approach where it looks like Zoo, but it's mm -hmm. also got really heavy elements of mid-range Warlock to the point where they kind of intermingled. And you can't really make the difference between both, but in those decks, Void Caller is a godsend, especially against decks like Freeze Mage. So we'll have to see what's gonna come up. Oh, Sixto will be playing Shaman. Shaman against Hunter. So if this, this um, yeah. if this is the aggressive Shaman, uh, then the Hunter is the worst matchup at all. Well, it's still mean... not super bad. It's not like 2080 or something like this. It's still like 60 for the yeah. Hunter, I would say. Hmm. It's not that bad. I, I even think Shaman right now is beating Hunters in general in the metagame right now. We see, like, Shamans are doing really well against Hunters. Um, you know, you mentioned the Fairy archetype earlier. There's a few ways you can negate that as Face Hunter, 
but ultimately you still get punched in the face for more than you can answer. Uh, like, you can deal a lot of damage, but the Shaman can somewhat remove your board, taunt up behind totems, and unless you've got a really good Hunter's Mark, that one can be really problematic. Well, yeah, but most of the time you just lose. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, bypass everything, hit phase for five, and then quick shot, into quick shot, mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. kill command. Well, I, I think most players are now playing one quick shot instead of two. Right. Y yeah. That was a, a huge... Uh, everybody loved playing two initially because they, they thought it would fit. But it's really hard to cut a really refined deck like Face Hunter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a Mech Shaman. So I would say go Seed, Fell Reaver. Uh, probably. I mean, I'm hoping I do. I would love that. I mean, Robot Thrall is a really good deck. If that's the one. Lotep. That's gonna save him. That will save him at some point. All right, abusive sergeant on the board. Wow, that's not great. Uh, it's a body at least, but do you ever just? No, you don't ever shock that. Yeah, no. I wouldn't say so. Yeah, I don't think it's really a good play. You've got so you can... many good earth shock targets in this deck. You can drop the mech warper because. Hunter doesn't have much options when it comes to trading for additional point of damage. The only option Glaivzuka, is Glaivzuka. Yeah, it's Glaivzuka, but everyone is playing one Glaivzuka nowadays. Because of the quick shot. Yeah, quick shot is taking the slot of the second one. It's really yeah. clunky sometimes to have four weapons in your deck. Um, that was one of my main criticisms of Face Hunter, and when, you know, quick shot came out, I realized uh, one of those weapons was going to get cut out to refine the deck even further. Oh, wow. Now, now, Earthshock that is, is convenient. Really great. Yep, I agree with you. Would you use both? You I have a point. Think... It's not even I, that I terrible. I would say I would, I would use both. No, wait. What about? I think that's totem, a bit of an what about totem but... up? What about totem up and killing one of the creatures? Yeah, you kill the two one, and then you see what he does with his mad scientist. Oh, no, never mind. Like Change plans. So he used the initial thought process of of ours. No, nope. so you can play a minion <laughs> on the back and force a trade anyway. Thing is, there is no follow up aggression from Sixto right now. Like he doesn't have. There's a quick shot. A three drop. Um. Animal right. companion. If it's a huffer, then it's great. Because Xixo has to drop a free mana or two mana mech. And there's not so much options when it comes to that, right? And he didn't have it for for the mech warper. Because it will use one mana. So you would see the mech instead of the Kogmaster. Most of if the you time. If you unleash, you can keep one hound. Well, you can, but do you want to? If you I think get... against Shaman you might get better value out of the Unleash later, but I don't even think it's bad right now. I think it's actually pretty solid. I would I would go for the Animal Companion. If it's Misha, it's great. If it's um, if it's uh, Leok, it's not bad. If it's Huffer, then it's kind of okay. -ish, but Huffer would be the worst option. It's a Mork. All right, so apparently just one Hound has stayed is on the board and Xixo is not even gonna have to worry too much about abusive he's gonna be able to take it out by the earth shock why, decided not why to did play strive could trade his mech warper instead of the abusive surgeon uh, no wait well n never mind never mind no it's uh, uh never mind no, don't talk about it <laughs> all right i forgot already it's gone you know this aggression from the hunter looks good on paper but it's starting to look a little it's weaker as we go to down, look right? Very weak, you, yeah. because of one thing. You already saw one unleash the hounds. So now, yeah. six will just overextend really, really heavily most of the time. Well, if he finds a Misha, it's not. Oh, that's a good card for later. Yeah, but now you have to use Animal Companion or Wolf Rider, and we just go face. Ah, uh, Leox sucks. Sucks now. Well, that sort of forces uh, removal, but you can't afford to do so. At least you can deny the Unleash with Lothab. Hmm. The Hunter is in a bit of a weird spot, I'd say. 
a really weird spot. Then again, the explosive trap could help negate the board. So I think you just go Wolf Rider abusive, hero power, full phase, then explosive trap, play a one drop, then quick shot for card draw. And you just go like full out aggression. That is probably your best bet at this point if you're Strife Crow. Okay. Unless you want to trade into Lothab. No, no, That's no, no, also no, 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 but I don't like it. Oh, this is insane amount of damage right here. Yeah. Six, eight, ten points of damage. That's I don't think really you can insane. afford not doing that. This is way too good. This is the winning play, and it's it's not so hard to do it actually. That's that's the reason why a face hunter has a face in it. <laughs> so I have a solution for all those of you who might want to play, uh, you know, a good deck against the up and coming dragon consort paladin it starts with f and it finishes with ace hunter so just just play that deck when paladin ace hunter comes out. yeah f. it starts with f for though but ace hunter so, yeah. that was a really old computer game i think ace hunter <laughs> what are you what are you hunting aces what do you play poker oh wow double quick shot all right that's still not bad yeah, I think uh, you just go full face. Explosive trap, quick shot, quick shot. And then you draw even what a card at the back of that. You don't need the second card now. So what about explosive trap, hero power, quick shot face? Yeah, but what if you find like a Dr. Boom and then you can't play your other quick shot? That's devastating, right? What? <laughs> Who plays Dr. Boom? In Face Hunter? In Face Hunter. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to have hope here, Lothar. I'm hoping somebody's not just playing you, face you... cards. <laughs> <laughs> you have hope that someone plays the overpowered card in his deck instead of, let's say, Arkengrohan. <laughs> so what's the line of play that you take here in this position? Uh, you do nothing. Escape concede? All right. Yeah. Well, that was a great line of play from Stripe crackle, Crow. Crackle face, hit for two, concede. Yeah, that's probably it. All right, well, uh, Sixto's going to take... Uh, Stripe Crow's going to take a win here against Sixto. So his Shaman deck wasn't quite prepared to deal with the, the Hunter, but that doesn't mean it won't necessarily get a win against Strife Crow's possible mage deck. We talked about that a bit earlier. We still haven't seen uh, Strife Crow's mage deck, and if Xixxo's well prepared, maybe his Shaman deck can take it. Mm -hmm. Well, so. we'll have to see what, what type of archetype is it still. Uh, so we'll get that information in a few seconds, I hope. Now, Strife Crow is going to be playing Mage for the next match, so we will definitely see what Strife Crow's Mage deck is. I would pin him on Mech Mage since, you know, we've talked about it. It's a deck that he thinks is one of the strongest. Uh, a little bit like Life Coach, in fact. You know, he did, uh, Life Coach did say that Mech Mage was one of the strongest for a while. I don't know if that's still his opinion at the moment with BRM having come out and the metagame being uh, shaken the way that it is. But... I'm not sure yet. Well, we didn't evaluate the whole BRM until we have, like, all five wings, you know? Yeah, that's right. It's Old really stuff. hard because it's like a week-by-week week evolution of the meta. Everything is still on a shifting sand, so it's really tough to make a really objective evaluation. But for the time being, uh, the metagame... It's funny that we have tournaments in an you know ongoing, evolving metagame. We saw Emperor, I think, is the only card that really you know changed everything. Garo was playing some kind of Blackwing tech a little earlier. But besides that, you know, Quick Shots saw appearances. But we didn't see much of... Uh, the whole thing in general. I wonder if the Fire Guard Destroyer for Shaman will spark some new decks for them. I think so. It's a great card. At least on paper. We'll see how it will, how it will look on the board. But uh, what do you think if, if Strife Crow managed to pull off here a surprise? And if he, if, he, if he plays Freeze Mage, this is a really great matchup. For Freeze for... Mage, yeah, it generally is, isn't it? Because or... you get Shaman and Rogue. Right. So, yeah, th those are two matchups you can definitely get. Although Rogue, if it's playing, you know, the, the whole Blade Flurry thing, has a better matchup than it used to. Well, it has. But it's it's almost the same as with, against Handlock. If you right. get that big Blade Flurry for the win, then you then you will win, most likely. But without that, basically just chipping off one point of health from the mage, and that's nothing you want to do yeah, long it's term. It's eight, eight turns to go through an ice barrier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's going to take you forever. Yeah, that, that takes yeah. th that takes a while, I would say. Yeah, welcome okay, to Pope so Down. Okay, so Strive Crow will play now the mage and will be will be still unsure for a few more seconds what will type of deck um, what type of deck will that be and Xixo will play with the shaman. 
Yeah, so it's going to be Shaman versus Mage. As I, We talked about that. I'm curious to see whether or not Sixo Shaman is going to be able to take it against the uh, Stripe Crows Mage. He might have planned for Mech Mage, and if he targeted that matchup, I think Mech Shaman has a really good chance. Uh, it's got the ability to counter burst and also wipe the board often more effectively because of a storm. Something that uh, not every Mech Shaman runs, but typically you'll see a one of in those decks to counter other aggro decks and snowball the lead. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Uh, I wonder if he's playing Lightning Storm in that deck. We'll have to see. I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm. I'm. Not, I have no idea. Yep. All right. We'll have to see uh, what ends up happening. So, Mage versus Shaman. I'd venture to say, Shrakko is going to be playing Mech Mage, but we'll have to to see the starting hands. Oh, yeah. and it is Mech Mage. And it is. And we I'll see a full Reaper. Oh yeah. I can't make that voice. That's one minion I can't uh, impersonate. I don't even know what kind of voice it has. Oh, it doesn't speak. It's like a, just a sound? Yeah, it's a sound that I've had nightmares with when I was younger and I played in Burning Crusade. Because they would ambush <laughs> you while you were running around Hellfire Peninsula. It would so get why, stomped on. Why the Fell River doesn't have a stealth? Um, I, it should. It really should. That card should have stealth. Actually, you know what it should do? It should play itself from your deck when it when you get it and have like it mills like 10 cards. It should just play itself as soon as you top deck it and have stealth. And you <laughs> you mill 10 cards for each card that your opponent plays. That's what it should do. All right, so very, very solid hand here for Stripe Crow. Yeah, that's true. It's missing a mech warper, but honestly, that's two not a big monsters. loss. That's like two flame imps turn one. Mm -hmm. it feels strong, really strong, and the Anoitron, wow, that's a huge drop too. Yeah, this is going to fork 6-0 to play very defensively here. I don't think that's something you want to do as the Shaman. So this turn, Mechwarper, next turn into um, Rockbiter, Hero Power, or if there will be a Anoitron, then Earthshock. Most likely. So do you just Rockbite. play? Do you play a Neutron trade, or do you Neutron hit for six? I think you play a Neutron and go six for face, but this is this is greedy, so it would it yeah. will backfire. All right, he just goes for the face, which makes I think uh, he goes for the face with only three instead of the total of six, which I think is a bit better of a play. Hmm. That does not solve all his problems. There's still more minions to come. Oof, ouch. Double Earthshock, Rockbiter. That's got wow. to feel bad. That's painful. You have to do it this this turn because you, you, you don't have time for upcoming turn. Turn 4 will be Yeti and you don't know what will happen in turn 5. So you basically count on drawing Fell Reaver on turn yeah. 5. You, you hope to get it on curve because otherwise it's going to get really, really tricky. He only finds a Cogmaster. That's not... Feather Not quite that. Feather Reaver will be really insane in this matchup because most likely Mech Mage will drop the, um, you know, the card will drop the cards as fast as possible. So his uh, his hand will be really low, and there will be no possibilities of like you know um, sp spamming you spamming, and milling your deck. Spamming, yeah, spamming and milling, milling. Lava burst. All right, so. The problem is, if you play it now, then you're overloaded next turn. That's that's a really big deal. Do you just totem cogmaster kill the uh, spider tank? Hmm. Oh, but then you're feeding him a fire alley if he trades away the mad scientist. Well, you need the fire elemental next turn. That's 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 for sure. You have to play it next turn. Man, he wishes he had an earth shock right now. I'm pretty sure. Like, that Earth Shock would be so good at the Mad Scientist, but I think he might have to overextend the Lava Burst. He's going to feed a Cogmaster wow. to his opponent next turn. Definitely a good line of play. Oh! Now, this is a, a draw. This is a really a good draw, but I think you keep it for the next turn. Oh, he didn't. Okay. Does, does he have to? What are the odds that a Hex comes out, for instance, on this, on this board? Why Hex? What about Lightning or... Storm? That a mech would take it would take out all the mechs. Yeah, and then your mage kind of weakens. I don't. I'm, I'm not sure. I would rather keep it in my hand and drop it now. But 
Okay, it, it turned out really well for Striper here. Okay, two minutes brought down to one. That sucks. That makes, yeah, I mean, one of them is going to be pinging bolt, so it's really not that bad. You pick your choice. I guess you ping the Shredder. Or trade away them. It doesn't matter which one you ping. If you're planning to kill both, both no, okay. it, it it would matter. Now we, oh, no. if you would ping the, the Palter Shredder, now you could, could have traded, right? With the Mad Scientist? For the use? Right, instead of trading with the 2 1. But it's ultimately the same, I think. You lose the same minions in the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. All right. Well, Sixo's position is looking a bit better now because he's only feeding a Cogmaster to his opponent as opposed to something amazing. But Stryker has another mere entity in hand. And oh, Mech Warper. Mech Warper. Wow. <laughs> are you playing Mech or are you not? Does That's it, not the two drops. Does it make any difference? Well, it, make, it makes difference for additional spare part or for a, a ping, ping without spare yeah. parts. That that's what it means, the mech draw. I mean, you could actually reversing switch your Cogmaster. Does it work? Because from what I remember, yeah, it, it, now they it used works. to buff it up. Now, okay, yeah, they, they fixed it. Now it works. They fixed it. I was I lost such an important ladder game because of that. That is that is a really good play here. If you go for Potted Sky Golem, Whirling Blaze, reversing switch. I mean, I don't even mind that. Or you trade into the Fire Ellie with a ping. It's not even bad. But oh, man. They spelt his guy gone. Hmm. Yeah, Meritity and keep the board. His opponent has a spare part and one card in hand, and he's on 14 health against a mage. I don't see that feeling too good for Xixo. You're a little late, mate. Yeah, definitely don't want to feed him a Fell Reaver. So there's three, five, two. Oh, it's almost lethal. Ah, that is lethal. Oh, that's lethal, yeah. Interesting. Really bad draw for Xixo, though. Like, he didn't have a creature for turn one, turn two. Yeah, his curve was off, and the double Earth Shock on another Shawn was really frustrating for him, I'm pretty sure. That's got to feel horrible to, to, to get... Uh... To be forced to do that effectively, and now Mechumage from Strifecrow is taking a win, which means that if the plan from Sixo was to target Mechumage, that's not going to work at all. And that leaves Strifecrow again with one deck left, I believe, which is his uh, Hunter. No, his Warlock deck at the very end. His Warlock, right? yeah, his Handlock. His so Handlock one against deck. the Shaman. Uh, mm. Shaman's pretty good against Warlocks typically, but yeah. the Mech one has a bit of a tougher time because Dark Bomb and Hellfires on their own are enough. Uh, and I if wouldn't BGH say it's is in... bad. You have Lava Shock also. I mean, the does, lava he, burst. does he play Lava Shock? Okay. Lava Burst. I was going to say, does he play Lava Shock? Because that's a card that I was expecting to do something to maybe bring up a Bursty Shaman. But I think we're going to have to wait for the Fire Guard Destroyer to see all that really shake out completely. For now, I think it's not so important to play Lava Shock, but I agree with you uh, here. Maybe the, the Destroyer will will change something. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it, it'd be nice to see the card. It's probably the best 4-drop in the game after Powder Shredder or on par with. Probably, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. By the that way, is, um, this weekend is um, Kingwin for Charity on Friday, Easter edition, Easter edition 2015, with 16 top players. You know what? Did you know? What's happening? The Kingwin for Charity event this weekend? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have it. Friday. It's starting on Friday. Yeah. yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think throughout the weekend, uh, it's going to be the charity event with Child's Play Foundation. So you know, it's it's an organization that we continually support at Kingwin. So it's nothing, it's nothing new. But this is going to be the Easter event, the Easter edition of the Kingwin for Charity event. But many new so. players will be introduced this um, with this edition. You know, so which ones? Not... I, I don't know if I can say. Aha. Okay. L let's not say then. But mm, you will not see the, re uh, the repetitions uh, of players from. You mean, I mean, the players from the previous edition will not appear in this one. Most okay, of the so it's going to be a fresh roster, effectively. Yeah. All right. Cool. That's so nice. something. In, something interesting for the All viewers right. and for the players too. All right. So the next match will be Sixo versus the Shaman. Uh, Sixo Shaman, sorry, versus the Warlock from Strife Crow. So it's going to be the matchup that we we talked about. If if Sixo gets an amazing start. Things could go well, but otherwise it could be somewhat difficult. 
Mm. I mean, if the Warlock gets the mid game, you've got Earthshot for Twilight Drake, so you're usually okay on that front. If you have an Earthshot for Twilight Drake, the the Warlock is such in a world a bad, of hurt. Yeah, yeah, in such a bad position. I can't even start on how bad it is for the Warlock. But you have to play it at turn four, or you don't play it at all. You drop it. The thing is, like, you might not even want to tap for it, right? Like, you don't yeah. want to over over tap yeah. just because you want to get it big because ultimately it doesn't matter if it's got 20 health or two the earth shock still one ki like one shots it mm -hmm. that's true so yeah. um the longer the game is being dragged out the higher are odds of drawing the earth shock so playing the twilight drake mid game or late mm -hmm. game doesn't make any sense yeah I don't unless, think it makes much sense against shaman unless you've unless got the shaman played it already on other targets like on Anoyashron twice, right? Or on <laughs> Ancient Watcher. Yes, that's a great play. Earth Shocking Ancient Watcher is, is one of the best plays you can make in the game. Well, sometimes you have to do it because it has taunt. And you, right. have, to go somehow, uh, you have to find a way to go through it. And then you have yeah, to you use have to the Earth Shock. Yeah. All right, so there is a splatter tank and a fell reaver here in Sixo's hand. Does he keep the Earth Shock? You definitely keep. You've seen the, the, fact, the fact that it's a hand lock, so you keep Earth Shock. Yep, pretty much all the time. I would say you could keep this entire hand if you wanted it, honestly. You can coin out the fairy for turn four. I mean, you are you do nothing turn one, then you get a turn two Annoy, turn three Spider, turn four fell Reaver or Earthshock Drake. Well, he didn't agree. And he got a worse hand. Interesting. How could that have gotten worse? We know now. I, I, I would say I, I agree with, Meling, uh, with mulliganing the... A Neutron, but I didn't didn't get the idea of Spider Tank. You have a Spider Tank dies to Twilight Drake, but you have the Earth Shock. Yeah, well, I, maybe he didn't mulligan it, and it was just a glitch from Spectator Mode, but I wouldn't think so. Oh wow, Ragnaros, hello. That's eight points of direct damage to the face, man. Yeah, dude, what what are you doing? What is this game? Is this Hearthstone or what? Welcome to Face Stone. It's so hard to stop a deck that has a good, you know, a good uh, aggression rolling. When they start to get the initiative, it's really tough to stop in Hearthstone. The same rule applies to every single card game. Yep. Alright, so... Well, he has the Shadow Flame and the Ancient Watcher, which can be really crucial. What about dropping the Void Color right now? I think you have to, J if yeah. only for the body. You don't really care too much about. It's about the bluff. Yeah. This is oh, skill, wow. man. You bluff your opponent. Are you playing poker? Did I raise like 300k from five dollars in one year? I don't know. Did you? Because I, I sure did. In fact, I'm challenging you to one v one. Best of one. Best of one. With 15 Be cards. Best of one poker hand. <laughs> you know, we're gonna play an SNG, fifteen hundred dollars. I'm all in first hand, and whoever wins <laughs> the best poker player. <laughs> you know, this is like the the micro stakes. You go in there, everybody's just shoving all in. You don't know what's happening. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? Okay, somebody's got to have like something going on here. Welcome to poker, micro stakes. All right, so Doomhammer gets developed here. There's no anti-weapon tech in the Warlock's deck, so. This is definitely gonna work. Wait, didn't he use the, the Harrison in the Warlock? Yeah, it's a great card because you need the card draw. Gara yeah. might have. <laughs> Gara probably did. Maybe, I'm thinking about it, but nah. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Gara was running Harrison everywhere. <laughs> Gara runs Harrison in every deck. I, I think you lose. Well. That's an lucky draw. I think you just play... I mean, Shadow Flame is such a bad card for you to see here. Do you have to crackle her? No. Anoyatron told him, go face. Yeah, and hope there's no flame. That's seven... Otherwise, you give him an Anoyatron, which you're okay with. That's it's seven just points. Easy to seven, seven damage, so he will be at 13 life. And you have a crackle with Lava, or lava Burst, so that's yeah. at least seven. With a lucky draw, you can almost kill him. If you roll a air power, rock, you can kill him. Rockbiter would kill him, right? Yeah, also. Yeah. 
or a second crackle even. And that's what I love about Burst Shaman, is its ability to just take games like this, so end them before they get too late. So I, I bet you have to... I bet you love also the Face Hunter because it's basically the same. Yeah, it's the exact same mechanic. You just go full face. <laughs> SM Orc. Loktar <laughs> Ogar! Oh man, you remember the Weapon Warrior to the face decks? Like, Anoa I... Tron made that impossible, Slush yeah. Clasher made that impossible, but those used to be so fun to play. Like, With there double was owls, little... double brawls. Yeah. <laughs> Just full face, <laughs> double owl, double brawl, heroic strike, motor strike. Oh man. The same was in World of Warcraft as a gene. There was a warrior with mortal strikes, which was an instant damage spell, which de dealt so much damage as your weapon plus one. Plus one? Oh my god, this is so, crazy. For, for two points of mana with instant. And also, if it was played in instantly, you denied your opponent's ability to heal for the whole turn. So it was a counter Are spell. Are you kidding to me? Heals. This is crazy. Yeah, it was insane. For aggro, that's actually really insane. Alright, so Strife Crow goes for the Molten Giant instead of the Earthling Farseer. It might... Actually, wait. There, there's possible lethal here. Yeah, it is. 5 plus 6 could be lethal, straight up. If Crackle <laughs> yeah. hits for high values, <laughs> this could be game. Uh, you but... think you will use that? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. That's way too risky. You could have done Nitron, drop the creatures and go face. Yeah. He played one Molten Giant, so he just, he, he just go for the 11. Well, now that gives a really good opportunity for Strike oh, to heal up with the heal bot and the other great. Drain. This is great. What is? Defender. With the Ancient Watcher? Or. I mean, I, I prefer anti heal bot with Earthen Ring, but. What about Farseer Defender of Argus? I think this is the most valuable. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't dislike that. It's just that you're negating the entire Rockbiter line of play by playing those two minions anyway. Oh, he oh. has the Molten Giant, okay. Four, five, six... Wait... Four, there's... Six, no, there's... Rockbiter would have to be... Hmm. Played. Yeah, he can't die unless there's a Spell Power Totem and High Roll on Crackle. I think Swagneros is gonna have to come out. Snipe his face. I think that's uh, the... Actually, he's dead if that doesn't happen. If, if it doesn't kill a minion, he's dead. Oh, <gasps> oh my goodness. Wow. The only thing he really wanted to see get hit, and it did. All oh, right. This sucks for Strife Crow. He well, doesn't have an answer to it. You double attack, Rag, Rag, and Hellfire, and then you die. That's really bad. Yep. So what about... What about Dr. Boom? Is that ever a thing you consider? Or Doctor... do you have to go for Defender because weapons? Yeah, no, well, I, I was thinking Dr. Boom, Dark Bomb, McWarper, go face. For six? Yeah, keep as many minions on the board as you can, right? Or yeah, just straight up weapons. Five, five minions is a lot. Yeah, for Rag, exactly. I, I mean, if your opponent has Earthshock, yeah. then so be it. Oh, he's going to kill the rag. Make sure he doesn't want to get he doesn't want to get sniped. Wow, or at least it's a safe play. so safe. Yeah, that's, very that's safe. The first, that's the first time I actually see him playing like that, you know? I think he's still dead no matter what. Rest in peace. 5 7 9. Yep. Yeah, he's dead. No, no, no. No, yeah, he's dead. Is exactly. Yeah, it is. It is exactly lethal. lethal. No. Oh, wow. Wow. That is exact lethal with the lowest possible crackle, which is Funny because because he died because he played safe. Yeah, <laughs> he played he played too safe and ended up yeah. losing the game as a result. So, Strife Crow is gonna lose this game. Sixo is gonna take a win with a Shaman deck. So this is gonna be Warlock versus the last deck from Sixo, which I believe is also Warlock, unless I'm mistaken. Wait, let me check. Rogue. Rogue. Okay, Rogue versus Warlock. Oh wow. Hmm. Well. What, what do you say to this matchup? I think it favors the Warlock a lot. Yeah, I'd venture to say that as well. It's just, it feels... The amount of saps you've got is limited. Your AoE clears need to be on point when you need them. And, and you can still get beat down very aggressively. 
and now with the Void Colors introduction in almost every single Warlock, that that even goes beyond the yeah. wound ratio it had. It makes it even tougher, honestly. Yeah, it makes. For, for Rogues. I'm just curious to see if... Um, like, uh, Rogues got what from this game? They got the Dark Iron Skulker from uh, Blackrock Mountain, which I don't think makes a difference to their already bad matchups. Like, I don't think it improves any of their bad matchups. And Gang Up, which is more of a fun card to play in mill decks mostly. So yeah, I don't know the roads change too much with Blackrock Mountain, at least not as much as perhaps they GBG. did in GVG with Tinker yeah. Sharp Sword Oil. And um, who would have thought of that, right? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Well, Tinker Sharp Sword is the card that I thought would enable mid-range rogue if... Uh, as an inclusion to Miracle, but then the Gadgetan nerf was announced at the same time, so it ended up being a complete shift of archetype from one to the other, as opposed to a mix of both, but um, I'm glad to see the rogues at least have working archetypes at the moment, as opposed to having none. That's when things feel terrible for a class. Uh, the game is in a very in a very heavy state of flux right now. We have multiple decks from multiple classes interacting in a metagame that's not really predictable, you can predict it from tournament to tournament, but it's only you can only do so much. Like every class can be participating in those places. True. Yeah, and this is a this is a situation that we are describing before we started today. Like mm -hmm. when when the meta game is so wide, it actually feels like there's no meta game. Yeah, you can't really prepare against a, a specific meta if there's too many possible decks into it like there's obviously some better decks than other ones we you know fast druid with emperor we've talked about face hunter that punishes everything um no matter what it is it's got the ability to win games against just about every deck now we'll see probably the emergence of some kind of mid-range warlock come back with demon wrath at least for a while so we'll give it a, about a, a month before we see things start to establish themselves in the black rock mountain meta at the very least yep well, Sixes draw is not bad. What do you think? You want the, the free mana creatures against Handlock? Yeah, you, you force you the Dark Bomb when you skip a tap. It, it's um, it's not even that. You need the the board control against um, a deck like Handlock. You ha you need the, the pressure that you can apply early game to push him into you know a situation when he can't play both the Taunt minions and clear the board. Yeah, which is usually what they aim to do, is play... They play something and then get tempo on the back end by wiping yours. Yeah. Kind of like sometimes rogues get that that you know opportunity as well. Alright, well, there's oh, a Malganus oh. here, that's a really early one. And two oh, wow. Void Colors, so you try to... I think you, you tap on turn 2, go Void Colors turn 3, Void Colors turn 4. Yeah, assuming the first one doesn't die, but either way, I think the only minion that's going to come out of that Void Caller is Malganus. The most unfortunate draw would be Jaraxxus, I think. It's not so bad. It can it's not be, bad. It can, it can be sapped, because you can still play it like um, Hero Power, and I mean as a Master Hero, and um, it's really hard to kill it. Like, how do you kill a 15 health minion uh, with a Rogue? It's impossible. Yeah, you really don't. You just sap it and hope and for the best. If he gets the Defense of Argos or Sun Fury Taunt, then it's basically un unkillable, unkillable, or undealable unless you sap. So prep sap Edwin? Yeah. I would say so. I mean, it sucks that you're using a prep on a non-Tinker's play, but I feel like ultimately that's your best line of play. Because the coin's been used, so you won't see a Belcher. That's a you might six, be able to six sneak minion, him. man. Yeah, that's really tough to kill. BGH doesn't even do it. You have an so, owl for minus four, minus four, but that's basically it. And si no more Siphon Souls. And even if there would be a Siphon Soul, that's still turn four. So if you're a Strife Crow here, do you play the odds with the Void Caller number yeah. two? I think you, you have, have to. Yeah, you have to. Hellfire basically does nothing. It I'd use... play the the one on the right though. Yeah, the same he sapped, right? Yeah, you don't want to tell him what you've got. All right. Well, it's still not a bad position here for for Strife Crow, not one bit. It sucks that he's gonna have to surrender the early and mid game, but he might be able to transition into a very solid, you know, late to mid late game 
mm -hmm. if he lives, which I think he's in a position to. If Xyxa doesn't sacrifice the Farseer and the Thanos, which will be odd to do yeah. right now, then he gets punished like so heavy because Strife can will just kill go... anything though, right? Because he can kill Malganus if he wants to. Well, look at this next turn Hellfire first, sacrifice Voidcaller into Edwin. And you have a, only the Violet Teacher will be on board. And most likely we'll get a Melganis. And me, maybe even second Void Core will be better. Because then you sacrifice the second Void Color. And yeah, you yeah get I, get, I get that. Then you get Melganis for sure. It's just a matter of seeing what happens here. Because that Violet Teacher is not dying right now. It's not dying, but you're... Okay, we don't have answer to the one ones to spawn. That's, that's the only, only issue. Is you don't it, have... It, it's only two... Two cards in Xixos' hand, so I would go for the Hellfire and sacrifice the Void Color. Yeah, anyway. it's the best play. Like, the only time where that backfires is when he's got another sap, and then you end up in a really weird spot. But that, that, you can't play around a second sap here. I don't think that's realistic. Yeah, I don't think so either. Well, let's see what Strife Crow finds off that Void Caller. Is that gonna be Malganus? Or is that gonna be the void caller number two? All right, so Xixo might not be. That's not so bad. Yeah, That's he might not, not so even bad. doubt that there is a Malganus there since this void caller came out. Prep oh. sprint. Oh wow! This what is so What a crazy huge. draw! Wait, is that is that lethal? Dagger prep. Oh man, that could be. Couldn't could it, it could be lethal if he finds. Fifty fifty. No. Fifty it's, fifty. No, it's even less than that. Oh, less, less, come on. Less, less than that. Oh, oh no, 33 eSports! Oh, no, eSports! E <laughs> oh my god. E that chance. Holy hell. Afian is laughing now. Wow. Somebody out there has got to be. Wow. Sixel is going to take the series against Strive Crow. So he gets the loss, you know, um, re retroactively removed from Masson dropping out of the league. So he's three wins, three losses right now. Uh, yeah, he's three wins, three losses, and Strife gets his first loss of the entire KPL against Xixo, so that's got to feel good. So the same, uh, the same result as Life Coach has now. Yes, exactly. So they're both at the very top. Uh, Strife was slightly ahead because he was 5 0, but then Masson's win got cancelled as a result of the, the drop, but now they're on exact equal footing. And <laughs> imagine if the Malganis would drop. Like, that would have actually that would have actually changed the whole game. Yeah, the whole game. It so, was really okay to uh, have the second void core right now because you had the uh, defender of Argus and mortal coil to kill off your own uh, void color if you really need it, right? Yeah. Yeah, everything was fine. It's just that the RNG played in uh, Xixos' favors here. Yeah. Like Masson lost to fifty percent. Yeah. And Sixty-six he got percent to fail, uh, to fail, and he he won the forty-three percent. And uh, what else? Masson lost the fifty-fifty, so Masson? it's kind of like it's stacked even further with the like, Malganus like, switch. Strife Crow. Uh, Strife Crow, right? No Masson. <laughs> 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 I, th I thought about the fact that he lost a game, uh, a win Race because Masson dropped. Yeah, that's right. Racism <laughs> confirmed. Live on Kingwin. Noxious is a racist. Monk and Maastrom confirmed to be one person. So that being said, we'll be back in 10 minutes for the next match of the day. Uh, should be a really entertaining match. It's going to be versus between RDU versus Reyna, two players who love each other very, very much. Uh, so we'll see them face off. RDU is in a bad spot in the league. Reyna is close to as bad of a spot. And if RDU yep. takes that one, that's going to put Reyna at a 2-4, which is exactly RDU's score. So we'll be right back after the break. Kingwin Pro League is going to keep going. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 